Good afternoon everyone, this is the first and latest update on Tropical Storm Saola which is now the ninth named tropical storm in the 2012 Pacific Typhoon season Today is the afternoon of 28th of July 2012 Again we continue to watch Tropical Saola which we've actually been monitoring for the past few for the past week actually um, and uh, continues to move slowly across the Philippine Sea. It is within the Philippine area of responsibility. That's why Pagas has given it a local name of Bagyong Hener. Uh, the storm was last located approximately 280 kilometers northeast of Vera Catanduanes Island, right over here. Uh, maximum sustained winds are now at 75 kph with gusts of up to 110 kph according to the latest warning from JMA. Uh, Saula is moving, currently moving northwestward at 15 kilometers per hour. You can see in this latest visible image how broad the circulation of the storm, more than, I say more than uh, 400 to 500 kilometers in diameter, with the feeder bands extending all the way towards Mindanao there. Uh, but as you can see, much of the clouds, the cen uh, center of the storm, remaining offshore, and uh, not really bringing very strong winds or heavy rain across southern Luzon, except. Uh, for some rough waves across the entire seaboard of the Philippines. Um, however, we do expect the system to uh, move uh, nearer to the eastern coast of Luzon, particularly here in Isabela and Cagayan, in the next two days. That's why the latest warning from Pagasus raised signal number one now across Isabela, Cagayan, Calayan, Batanes, and Babuyan group, group of islands in anticipation of the um, arrival of Tropical Storm Saola or Hiner. Looking at, uh, we have a different view of the satellite here of the infrared image. You can see that we are seeing very strong convective activity, particularly over the center. You can see the very strong, very cold cloud tops, indicate indicative of the um, of the uh, activity inside the storm. And you can also see that we have uh, some scattered, uh, and isolated thunderstorms popping up here in central and southern Luzon, but the main uh, Focus here is feeder bands uh, that is moving across Visayas and even here in northern Mindanao. We have reports of around 80 millimeters of rain falling widespread across uh, the island of Leyte, Samar, even here in uh, Cebu, uh, Masbate, and actually even here in Palau. Um, they've recorded 80 millimeters of rainfall in the past 24 hours. That is because uh, indirectly because of Saola and the effects of the monsoon trough which is enhanced by the by the system as well. Looking actually at the um, radar from Pagasa, this is on Project NOAA, you can see here this is uh, the radar data from Tagaytay and you can see that sp uh, scattered isolated thunderstorms that I've uh, talked about. Um, but it's, uh, uh, in terms of these uh, rains here in southern Luzon, not, not as widespread and as not as heavy just yet. However, if we look towards the Visayas region, then you can see that widespread light to moderate rains and even pockets of heavy rain moving across Cebu, Negros, and here in Bohol. Remember, uh, we had reports of actually of, uh, of a tornado uh, touching down here in Bohol yesterday, uh, destroying 70 houses. Um, it's get indicative of the, of the uh, possible intensity of the thunderstorms here. Uh, some of them could be indeed uh, very severe, uh, bringing strong rains, uh, strong winds, and again, bringing the possibility of tornadic activity. But as um, Saolo continues to move northwestward, uh, we expect those feeder bands and those heavy rains basically to um, gradually let up. However, as we all know here in the Philippines, the southwest monsoon will be uh, enhanced by the system again and um, potentially bring uh, another round of uh, heavy rains across Visayas and eventually towards Luzon and s as the system moves to the northwest. Now the next question is where the system will go. Um, the main idea here is that Saula or Henera should stay away from, from Luzon and not make a direct landfall. Uh, however, as I said earlier, it could still uh, move near uh, Luzon that uh, th that areas here could um, experience strong winds. That's why, as I said, we have signal number one already up for some areas in northeastern Luzon. But here we have the layer mean wind analysis showing uh, the uh, circulations here in the atmosphere and the potential track of the storm. We have this subtropical ridge anchored near Japan 
and uh, the main philosophy here is that as Saula tracks to the north it will eventually hit this block basically and eventually turn to the west northwest uh, most of the forecasts right now are taking Saula towards uh, Taiwan by uh, early next week um, however we have here the latest uh, computer actually this, this earlier this morning this is the multi-model ensemble prediction from Korea Meteorological Administration using 11 uh, global models and the uh, ba basically tells you the agreement between the computer models used darker purple here you can see uh, depicts a strong agreement uh, across the models La uh, lighter blue and lighter green depict um, uh, not so much agreement basically across the computer models and you can see that the mean this red line over here basically takes uh, the middle track of the uh, of the uh, computer models and uh, showing a track across across Luzon Strait so right now we have two camps of a track towards Taiwan and the other one across actually across the northern tip of Luzon and if you take the average of those two tracks you basically end up with a forecast track that will uh, move across um, uh, across Luzon Strait. Now if you look at the official forecasting agencies starting with Pegasa, most of them are actually leaning with a uh, track more towards the north, northwest and eventually making landfall here on uh, Tuesday according to Pegasa. We have uh, JTWC's warning meanwhile, the latest warning from them also actually taking Saula towards the uh, uh, towards Taiwan uh, but later, uh, actually forecasting a later landfall, probably around Wednesday night or Thursday morning for Taiwan here. And you can also see JTW is expecting the system to become a typhoon by the time it makes landfall in uh, Taiwan. Finally, we have JMA's forecast track, actually also showing a track across Taiwan, but much farther south if we extrapolate the five-day forecast from JMA. JMA also expecting Saula to become a typhoon in about two days. So we do have the potential of, of, um, of some quick intensification in the next uh, 24 to 36 hours. Um, most of the forecasts are now expecting this system to become a typhoon just as it moves uh, across the um, uh, Babuyan Channel and probably uh, moving within 200 kilometers of the northern tip of Cagayan. So expect some very heavy rains and strong winds and also those um, again rough waves not only here in the eastern seaboard but eventually moving into the northern and western seas of surrounding uh, surrounding Luzon. So the forecast right now again basically taking Saula offshore of Luzon and potentially towards Taiwan but as, as I've said as I've shown some of the models are uh, tracking Saula towards the Luzon Strait and even actually towards southern China. The key thing here is how weak this uh, subtropical ridge will become the next two days because we are expecting some sort of weakness um, that should allow Saula to track more towards the north. However, um, uh, it's still up in the air as, as to the eventualities of the, of the forecast track. That's why we keep monitoring the uh, the system here. Before we uh, end our update for today, just want to quickly mention the tropical depression uh, well south of Japan. This is tropical depression 95W, around 700 kilometers east of uh, Iwoto here in the Ogasawa Islands. You can see some uh, some sort of convective activity with some very good outflow actually. Um, but much of the convection is actually sheared to the east and southeast of the storm. The low level circulation center is located over here. Um, however, latest satellite image are suggesting are showing uh, that the uh, convective activity are starting to reappear near the center. So probably hinting at some sort of intensification happening tonight and into tomorrow. Uh, JTWC also issued a tropical cyclone formation alert. JM expecting the system to become a tropical storm and if it does it could become a very significant player in our forecast uh, with, uh, with Saula in uh, the next uh, few days. So that's the update on both systems right now in the Western Pacific. Continue to keep monitoring the official forecasting agency especially here in Pegasus for the latest signal warnings, thunderstorms and flood warnings for your area as well. JMA also. Um, that is all for right now. Stay safe. Bye-bye.